Now we're going to have, uh, we've had a lot of questions, so uh, just up front I can say I'm not going to get through all of them, so uh, apologies um, if, I, uh, if I don't ask your question, but hopefully the speakers might be able to. I know uh, uh, Sunil's been in answering at least one question. So I'm going to um, direct my, the, the first question that came in to Joji. Um, uh, I'm going to combine two questions in one, actually, about reference architectures. Um, the first question was, could you give us a little more detail about the reference architecture mentioned on your slide on tools and techniques? And uh, the second question is, uh, you mentioned reference architectures as, uh, as a tool driving digital transformation. Do you see value in the certification of reference architectures? Great. Yeah. Uh, uh, great question. So let me start with the first part. Right? Yeah. So the reference architecture, what we are uh, what we are set up is basically a strategic look at where we want to be, right? And that takes into every aspect of uh, uh, in enterprise. Uh, it it, uh, it takes data, it takes applications, it takes the infrastructure, uh, the hosting. Um, even we have also gone um, to detail of looking at also the a modern workplace, right? Uh, because um, the company we, which is essentially old with all the old legacy, you know, we have also, uh, you know, challenges with that system. So that is what the, the uh, technology reference architecture talks about, and it, so that the it has multiple elements, you know, taken into it. And what we have done is taken um, uh, each of these uh, pillars, you know, what we call, and have a great stream of work which happens. Okay. Let me move to Sunil, if I may. Um, question, um, would you suggest that organizations using BPMN and UML should transition to using Archimate? So definitely they can use uh, Archimate. Still, whatever they're using, it must be used for BPMN. At the same time, the, they need to adapt Archimate because that becomes a standard language across the enterprise. Right, okay, thank you very much. Um, let's take a question for, for Suresh here. Um, can you speak, Suresh, a little to the, the impact of switching to commercial off-the-shelf systems, uh, the, the impact that that had on driving EA? Um, the question is, personal experience was that in the mid-2000s, uh, people thought we didn't need EA anymore because we were buying instead of building. But how can, it, how can those things be harmonized now, do you think, Suresh? Um, well, uh, with the COTS packages, yes, uh, we were... We were able to uh, bring up the systems up and running quickly, but I feel like the optimization is lost uh, when you use the COTS packages because uh, you can't share the infrastructure when you are using COTS packages, right? So the the infrastructure is is uh, is is kind of replicated in most of the the COTS packages. So the optimization was not that much uh, with the COTS packages, but the advantage that we got was. So we, we kind of uh, brought the systems up and running very easily, right? So th that's where we, we have to see. So with the cloud also, with the, new, with the cloud computing, now is it good to go for uh, you know, SaaS or is it good to go for PaaS or IAS? So that's where uh, the organizations have to make a you know, better choice in picking the right uh, you know, service with the, with, with the cloud vendors. Otherwise, you may lose the optimization there. Right. Okay. Thank you. Joji, do we have you back on audio yet? I don't think we do. Um, so you may be, uh, you may be um, dialing in again. And uh, Sunil has been uh, very good at answering the questions in the, uh, uh, in the Q&A channel. Um, I'm trying to find one that you, the, that you haven't got to yet, Sunil. Um, okay. But uh, no, that's, that, it, it's great to get the, great to get the questions answered. So, um, uh, there was there was one uh, that that came in um, that you, that you have answered, but I think it's I think it's worth um, uh, worth bringing out again. Um, and it was a it was a, a question about um, some of the let's see, have I got this right? Yes, I'm, I'm trying to find it now. There's so many questions. Um, the yes, it's this one. You've you've uh, you've answered it. But could you connect a business capability to an application component to data? and information components using Archimate, and can that relationship be version controlled? Uh, yes, Steve. Uh, it can be connected. Uh, Archimate has got the risk notations. The capability from the business all the way to the data can be connected. 
and especially with the tool, it is possible to have version control. Right, that's great. And you, and you mentioned that uh, there are a number of tools that are accredited by uh, by the Apple Group. So um, uh, great. Let, let, let's go for one of those definitely. Um, question for Suresh. Um, on your slide, enterprises need to be di uh, need to be agile from end to end. The model looks very much like the IT for IT reference architecture. Is that uh, intentional? Well, it's a combination of many many frameworks, many good frameworks uh, in the industry. One being the IT for IT. Uh, actually, you are, you might be familiar with my uh, agile uh, top agile the uh, agile enterprise architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, so I combined uh, my top agile with the IT for IT DevOps. So it's a combination of multiple things. Yes. It is a bit intentional, I would say. Okay, thank you. And I think we're still, uh, I don't want to leave Joji out, but I, I think he's dropped from the list that I can see. So if you're there, Joji, do, uh, do uh, um, let us know. Um, okay, another uh, question for you, Suresh. Uh, what, according to you, based on your experience, are the top two challenges in achieving application portfolio rationalization in a large organization spread across the globe, and how do you address those? Uh, one of the biggest challenge that I would see is, uh, you know, when you are rationalizing your portfolio, right, uh, we are not looking, uh, we are not doing a good analysis on, uh, from a business value perspective. Right. Uh, so whether those applications are, uh, you know, giving any business value, right? So whether there is a return on investment or not, right? So that that business uh, perspective is kind of a missing in, in that uh, rationalization effort, right? Uh, that is the biggest challenge that I would say. And then, uh, you know, so uh, when I see any application modernization, right? Uh, they are just taking one application functionality and building that with a newer technology, right? Just, uh, you know, one-to-one -one mapping. That's the biggest disaster, I, I think. Uh, so when you are transforming, that's, that's, uh, that's the time that you can see how you can change your business itself, right? The business processes or, you know, how you do the business itself. But, uh, you know, organizations are missing that opportunity when they are rationalizing their application portfolio. Right. Okay, um, and uh, another another uh, question for uh, Sunil, um, yeah. uh, which again you've uh, you, you've answered in the chat, but I think it's worth um, it, it's worth bringing up because it's uh, there's been a lot of understandably a lot of mentions of agile and the need to do things in an agile way. Um, so the question was, is is it possible using Archimate to uh, develop models in an agile way, um, uh, you know, along the way, as it were, rather than waiting uh, long periods with, between them. Uh, definitely, you must go with the agile way because as you get the information, you must be able to capture the information and be able to show the user what is the outcome of it. At the same time, with the agile way, we can able to must be a working software similar to that, we can be able to give a uh, understandable requirement and. Especially with the sophisticated tool, we can able to version control and easy to manage the outcome. Right. Okay. Thank you. And um, let's see. Uh, we have uh, another question for Suresh, which was, um, yes, how can you take enterprise strategy to execution through uh, through EA 3.0? Um, yeah. So there are many things that we have to look at. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, you know, uh, digital transformation or uh, the newer transformation enterprise architecture 3.0, which I'm talking about, is not just about uh, technology, right? So I think uh, most of us has understood that, and probably it's a time to understand that it is not just the technology transformation that we are doing, it should be a business transformation itself, right? So if you look at how you're operating your business, how you're transforming your business, and probably the technology, the newer technologies that we got, the smack it or whatever, is helping us in that transformation. That is good. So that that is what we have to look into rather than just trying to use whatever the newer technology is there and just trying to transform, you know, purely from a technology perspective. 
that is that that doesn't uh, reap any benefits right we have to transform from a business perspective rather than just technology perspective understood okay and uh, i'll i'll just squeeze in one more uh, question for sunil if i if i may again you've you've put a, a short answer in the chat but um can you suggest some good techniques to ensure the outside in customer perspective is captured in Archimate models? Yeah, definitely can use the motivation model. So we've got this motivation. Again, we've got the business canvas. Again, that can be utilized to capture the information. Wonderful. So this two technique is very proven and it really works. <laughs> I use the cross. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it does. That's great. Gentlemen, we're going to leave it there. I do see that uh, Joji is uh, answering some of the questions in the in the chat. I know there was uh, one in one in particular I was about to get to um, regarding um, how you handle a, a common vocabulary across multiple companies. Um, so uh, if you if uh, any, there are any unanswered questions, then if the speakers could go in and do that, that would be much appreciated. And uh, in the meantime, thank uh, thank all three of you for your contributions and uh, a virtual round of applause from me. Thank you.